Well, 70 years ago, the United States had just come out of World War II. Uh, this country had always been globally engaged, but the question was, would the United States accept responsibility for maintaining global order? Uh, during World War II, of course, the United States created an enormous military, army, air force, uh, navy. Immediately after the war, there was a very rapid demobilization, you know, bringing people home after uh, having served overseas. But the question was, would we revert to the really quite small army, negligible air force, and reasonably good-sized navy that we had before World War II, which was more or less our traditional posture, uh, or would we create something much larger on a standing basis? After we had assumed this global commitment, after we saw the Cold War through to a successful conclusion, saw the liberation of Eastern Europe, uh, for example, the question then becomes, well, should the United States continue to play that global order, bolstered by military power when necessary? Why, after the Cold War, should the United States go through the, the expense in uh, treasury and periodically in blood to maintain global order? And my answer to that, after a, an extended discussion, is because nobody else will, and because the order that we take for granted now is not self-sustaining. It's not automatic. And one thing that concerns me is I think we've, with the passing of the World War II generation, with the people who experienced the 1930s and the 1940s, we, we've lost the sense of how bad things could really get. Things could get a lot worse than 9-11. It's a completely natural response to say, you know, we have b borne these burdens for a long time. Why doesn't somebody else uh, carry them? You know, the alternative to the United States is not China setting the rules, because among other things, if First, the Chinese really can't, but secondly, if they did, we would not like the world that would then result. Second thing that is very important for people to remember is the United States has benefited from the world order that we constructed and that we've paid for with both money and blood. Well, 30 years out, I can imagine different futures. Um, I, can, I can, unfortunately, imagine a pretty dark future in which uh, the United States is you know, paralyzed by internal disagreements, uh, make some feckless decisions, listens to those who say, let's pull back, let's retrench, let's not get involved. And that would be a pretty chaotic and dark world uh, in which a lot of people would get killed, in which our own rights might end up being circumscribed and limited, um, and in which we'd be poorer. I can also imagine, though, a world which is considerably more prosperous than the world we have today, as amazing as that world is, uh, a world in which actually international cooperation is more the norm than it is today and in which more people enjoy some of the very fundamental rights that we take so much for granted. So I can imagine a, a much more hopeful world in 30 years.